Quick questions. What is the opposite of red? Is it green or is it cyan? Do you think luminosity and brightness are the same thing? Which do you think is heavier? What do you think is the difference between tint, shade and tone? And why is the letter K used for black in CMYK? Hey, my name is Sid and in this video, I'm going to demystify the language of color and help you take absolute control of it in Photoshop. You see, we are all taught to accept certain truths about color, but have you ever taken the time to examine where do these beliefs come from and why? To understand the present, sometimes we have to go back to the past. So let's go back to the time when the color wheel was invented. Back in the 17th century, when a plague broke out in England, a young man made several discoveries while still under quarantine as his school was closed. Although his laws of gravity, motion or calculus may not be of great importance to us as artists, his discoveries in the color spectrum is still the foundation of today's color wheel. Yes, I'm talking about Isaac Newton. Taking a prism, he held it up against a slit on his door and projected the beam onto a piece of white paper. His experiments led to the theory that red, yellow and blue were the primary colors from which all other colors are derived. During this time, most of the people thought that color was made up of light and darkness, including a German writer, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. While Newton is credited with the invention of color wheel, it was Goethe who introduced the concept to associate different colors with emotions. For example, if you look closely at his color wheel in the area with yellow, you can see the word good, which means good. According to him, yellow was bright like the sun and exciting, so it stood for good. Goethe's perception to color was taken to the next level by a Swiss painter Johannes Itten, who created strategies for successful color combinations and its impact on our moods, leading to the concept of color harmony. And interestingly, Goethe's color wheel is still used to this day to create color harmonies. Now let's see how the modern color wheel came into existence. In the 18th century, a German painter Jacob Christoph Leblon invented a three color printing process to create imitations of his paintings. He thought he could combine the primary colors of the traditional color wheel that is red, yellow and blue to make full color prints, which he did, but the mixture of all three colors was a muddy brown and not pure black. So to add some punch to the darker shades, he came up with the four color process printing in which the fourth color was black and this also helped him cut costs for the rest of the dyes. Now what is interesting is that his original color model RYB became RYBK where K is for black. Also K stands for key as in the key plate that was used to align all other three plates during printing. Since the letter B was already taken by blue, black was denoted by the letter K to avoid confusion. Over the years, the blue and red inks were tweaked to a certain process blue and printer's red to provide a larger variety of tones. And even though the ink colors changed, their names didn't. And if you look at process blue, it is in fact cyan. So it seems that the names cyan and magenta came much later and even in the mid 20th century, it was still referred to as blue and red. And even now, if you take a printout of cyan and show it to a non-art related family or friend, guess what their answer will be? Blue, right? So we might never know the true origin of CMYK. Now with the invention of color displays, red, green and blue were chosen as the primary colors as they matched the three color sensitive cones in the retina of the human eye. You see, paper reflects light and each ink you put on it will reduce the light that would have otherwise been reflected. In other words, it subtracts one color from white and that's why CMYK is known as the subtractive color system as it is used for printing on paper. However, unlike paper that reflects light, the colors that we see on a digital device are created by combining colors with a transmission of light from the backlit screen. In Photoshop, if we start with darkness or black, when you add a red brush stroke and then blue on top of it and change the blend mode to screen. Why screen blend mode? The name says it all. It adds colors to create new colors, the way display screens do. And if I create another layer and add green on it, as soon as I set the blend mode to screen, we get white, where the red, green and blue colors mix. That's why RGB is known as the additive color system. Take a look at this image for example. You can see I have separated it into three layers. First one is red, second layer is green, and then blue. So every single image in Photoshop or any screen you actually use is made up of only three colors, red, green and blue. 
And if you take a look at the black and white gradient, you will see that even what we perceived as luminosity is actually made up of red, green and blue colors. And this is completely opposite to the subtractive color mixing of CMYK. To do any color correction in Photoshop, you will have to memorize the RGB color wheel, where red is the opposite of cyan, green of magenta and yellow of blue. This is also known as the CMYK color wheel because CMYK predates RGB by many years but it's one and the same thing. So which color wheel should we use to create color harmonies? In my opinion, there is no color wheel that can fully describe the complexities of how we perceive color from light. Remember that color wheels are merely a guideline and it's ultimately up to you to define the implications of your color palette. Now. Before we even get into color grading or harmonies, it is very important for you to understand and distinguish the three characteristics of color, hue, saturation, and brightness. A hue is a color in its purest state with full 100% saturation. Hue is generally what we refer to as the name of the color. So red, orange, blue, and green, these are all hues. Also, did you notice the hues are labeled by degrees? This is because they correspond to their location on the circular color wheel. When you bend the spectrum of colors into a circle to join the red ends, what you get is a color wheel. Hues can produce different colors when it's tinted, shaded or toned. Adding white to a color is known as tinting. So any color that is lighter than the original hue would be its tint. Adding black to a color is known as shading, so we can get a variety of shades of a hue when mixed with increasing amounts of black. Adding gray to a color is known as toning. This is used to desaturate a hue. Saturation or chroma is the purity or intensity of the color. And desaturation means a color is close to neutral gray. You can desaturate a color by mixing it with gray or its complementary color from the RGB color wheel. Brightness or value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. Now don't get this confused with luminosity or lightness. Luminosity is the perceived brightness of a color ranging from black to white on a grayscale. For example, when you see the color yellow and blue at 100% brightness, the yellow color seems brighter. This is because it appears to be closer to white, right? So. If I open the color picker properties and choose the color yellow, you can see the brightness in the HSB section which stands for hue, saturation and brightness is 100%. But the luminosity value as shown in the L or lightness of the LAB color mode is 98. And if I choose the blue color now with 100% brightness, the luminosity value is only 30. This is because our eyes perceive their brightness to be different which is shown in the luminosity. Take a look at the tonal values provided below each color even though they are at 100% brightness. And in the Photoshop color picker, if I select the red hue and as I move it along its lighter tints, see how the saturation percentage decreases while the luminosity value goes on increasing. And from the hue, if I move along the shades of red, see how the brightness percentage is decreasing and also bringing the luminosity value down with it. So, the luminosity is controlled by both brightness and saturation of a hue. Now, color harmony is a combination of simultaneously used colors that look pleasing to the eye and evoke certain feelings, moods, or emotions. Here are some of the most important color schemes based on the traditional color wheel. Monochromatic colors come in shades of a single color. They are created by adding white, black, or gray to a single hue to create multiple tints shades and tones. Complementary colors live opposite to each other on the color wheel. This color scheme can produce the maximum color contrast. Analogous colors lie directly next to each other on the color wheel. Since the colors don't have the contrast and tension of the complementary colors, they create a calm viewing experience. Triadic colors uses mainly three evenly spaced color around the color wheel, producing the points of a triangle. For example, red, yellow, and blue are triadic colors. Tetradic colors consist of two complementary pairs with their four colors forming a rectangle on the color wheel. The square color scheme has four complementary colors evenly spaced around the color wheel. The split complementary color scheme is made up of a key color and two colors adjacent to its direct complementary. Now I'm sure you must have heard of these color schemes more than a hundred times, but really, 
anyone can memorize them or refer to it at any time. However, the real test when many fail is how to distribute these colors to make your color palette appear cohesive. To understand how to do this, you need to grasp the concept of weight. Just like colors can have temperature, they can also have weight. Weight of a color is controlled by size or proportion in which it's used and its luminosity. If we have two circles, one big and one small, both black, you know the first circle appears to be heavy. This is because its size or proportion is bigger. If the big circle gets a very light red tint and the small one has a dark red shade, small one appears to be heavy because the big seems to be transparent and light. When both the circles of the same size that are not so obvious, you can check their luminosity values in Photoshop color picker to see which one is lighter. Once you distinguish and understand color characteristics and how to distribute it, you can control the direction of how the viewer will view your image. Here are a few tips to create stunning color harmony. The key color is the most important and predominant color in the image. Choose the key color with right combination of hue, brightness and saturation to set the tone and mood of your image. There are no absolute rules for color selection. The perception of color is dependent on how it is used in your visual. Once the key color is set, pick the other colors with the help of the color wheel and distribute the colors to create tension or harmony by controlling the proportion, saturation and brightness. Remember, the warm and cool grays communicate with each other and blend better within the space while the highly saturated colors fight for the space. Color theory is not only for painters or graphic designers, it is very important for photographers and retouchers. Ideally, color concepts should be used right from the pre-production stage, but even if not, retouchers can complement the subject's colors by pushing the neutral grays to its complementary tints and shades for better transitions. Now I've loaded you with a ton of information and you're probably not going to process it all right now. So make sure to save this video for future reference. And guys, if you're a working professional, make sure to check out our online store at stylemypick.com for the best Photoshop retouching and color grading tools and see if it can help your business. Also, please do subscribe to the channel and make sure to ring that notification bell to be notified as soon as any new video releases. See you in the next one.